this seems like it was not existing in a world so divided in a world that's so troubled the fear the future i've lost hope thought i was all alone but at a cross in calvary jesus died for me the roses set me free His masterpiece created for his glory. Welcome me to his family. And I'm adapted and I'm not alone. And I'm adapted, I worship at your throne. And I'm adapted in Christ when I I worship at your throne
Welcome to Henderson General Baptist Church, where uh, <clears throat> I'm still not feeling great, but, you know, life goes on and we continue pressing forward. Uh, we are looking in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, and tonight we're going to look at the idea of something more. Uh, so I look up and I see the Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15, what I've been reading over and over again. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, it's important that we understand that we are called to love God's people everywhere and to continue to pray for them constantly. Pray for them constantly. So that's why I put up tonight the idea of the India mission. Uh, I've been talking about this over the last few weeks and just the idea that uh, Jesse is setting up to help uh, people become pastors in their area, to become church planters, to become evangelists. Uh, this is a vital, vital ministry uh, and a vital role for them to have. Uh, and it costs money. I mean, not a lot, but we're looking at probably a hundred people and that's going to end up going through this and for his group I think it's going to be about 25 of them through his own personal group the first group uh, so uh, about $500 a month is needed uh, for that and water wells maybe you're looking and saying I don't want to do that but I want to go with water wells I think about the India uh a Bible program and think, man, what kind of connection can we have and what kind of things can we do uh, to help them? Uh, I think about uh, for us today also with me and uh, the General Baptist Bible College and knowing that they're going to one day get back to in person and be able to do that. They have lots of repairs because of different storms that have come through. So maybe that's your thing. Uh, and, and, I, and I say that because through Henderson General Baptist Church, our desire is to continue to help people come closer to God, uh, no matter where you're at. Um, so there's, there's more to talk about, but for us uh, tonight uh, or in the morning, whatever it is you're watching this and, and joining in on this, uh, I want you to think about where we were on Sunday uh, and Sunday we talked about in Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verses uh, 5 through 14. Uh, originally I was only supposed to do verses 5 through 7, uh, but I did more. So we'll probably cover some of those again this Sunday. God decided in advance, in verse 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on, his, on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with his blood of his son and forgave our sins. You know, when I think about this and I think about our lives and I think about the reality that God calls us to be holy and we have this thought that we're going to be able to do this on our own, we can't. You can't do it and I can't do it. He had to purchase our freedom with his blood it's what he did for us it brings him great pleasure what is that you do you bring him great pleasure we talked about this on sunday so how do we go deeper to grow stronger i want you to think about romans chapter 3 verse 23 all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. His glory is standard. Everyone. So I say those verses. I say that verse. And I, and I quote it quite often. It shows up in our Bible study. It shows up in our um, sermons. I have this scripture 
set up, it shows up all the time. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are, for everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Why do I read that? I read that because it's important for you to know, it's important for me to know that I can't do this on my own. I can't be holy on my own. I can't be righteous on my own. I can't find salvation on my own. I can't live on my own. I can't become or be made alive on my own. And if it wasn't for the love of God, I would be lost forever. When Adam and Eve sinned in that garden, it started a vicious cycle, if you will. And it's a cycle that continues on to this day. And until Jesus Christ returns, it's going to continue on. But what we have to do is we have to realize that in this moment, and for you and for me, as we look at this, and I again pull up uh, verses 6 and 7 out of Ephesians chapter 1, so we praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us who belong to His dear Son, grace that He has poured out on us. Grace, grace, God's wonderful grace. See, we are adopted into His family. We're His masterpiece, but it isn't because of what I've done. It's not because of who I am. It's not like, hey, that Chad Hensley, he lives in Kentucky. There you go. I'll give it to him. It's not that. So for you, for me, I want you to think about this. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with his blood, with the blood of his son, and forgave our sins. So now we look to Romans chapter 3, and I pull this up. Where it says, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. As was promised by the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. This is a picture of my, my Bible and how it looks, how I put the markings. Uh, I wrote in Romans chapter 3 at the top just so you would know where we were. But whenever I see this and these underlines, how I've made it bigger, I, I, I put bold letters and I made it bigger. No matter who we are. See, he purchased your freedom, yours, no matter who you are. He did it. And it's not by how well I keep the law. It's not how well I do things. It's not how many times I read the Bible. It's not how many times I do this. He did this because he had a plan for you. He had a plan for me. It was a plan that was set out long before the world was ever created. He, he poured out his grace. I mean, imagine me taking this cup and, and, and it's got water in it. I got water in it and just taking it and pouring it over top of my head. Some of you would like to see that, but I'd have to clean up the mess and I don't feel like cleaning up a mess. So I'm not doing that. But I want you to think about this. I want you to think about in your life right now. Who would you say, no matter who you are, come on into my house? Here's a key. Would you do that? I wouldn't do that. As a matter of fact, you know, the only people that have keys to our house is uh, Caitlin and Heather and myself. That, that we. We have a lot of friends or family, you have all that, but why, why do we not give everybody a key? And yet, Jesus died on a cross for every single boy and girl, every single man and woman. He did this, and, and the reality is, is that we are made right with God, not because of what we do, but because in whom we place our faith. See, when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, the one who, who purchased our freedom 
freedom from sin, freedom from hell, freedom from the grave. Yes. See, we're all going to die one day unless Jesus comes back before then. And when we all die, we all get put in a grave or we get um, put in an urn. We, 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 whatever it is, you, you get all these different ways. But the reality is, is that we're not there forever. See, Jesus is going to return. And when he does, we're all going to rise up with him. That's where faith comes in. But I want you to see that it's no matter who you are. No matter who you are, <coughs> you get the key to heaven. You get to go to heaven, everybody. But there does require that little bit of faith, doesn't it? See, every one of us have sinned, and, and, and that sin means that you didn't keep the law well enough to be able to get in on your own. That sin, no matter how big or small we want to think it is, no matter how wonderful we think we are, it, that sin stops us from meeting the standard of who God is. That's how holy He is that every single one of us falls short. <coughs> Sorry about the coffin. Yet God in His grace freely makes us right in His sight. He did that, he did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. See, he freed us from our penalties of our sins. And because of that, we now have right standing with God. And it's not in how we're going to keep the law. Does that mean that I don't try to do the Ten Commandments? Absolutely. The Ten Commandments are no longer in, invalid. It's no longer not there. But we realize that God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. The sac this, sac <coughs> this sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what would be, what would do, what what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness for he himself is fair and just and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. I want you to see how I made it bigger and bold. His righteousness. Sometimes I think we got to just slow down and remember who it is that we're talking about. We're not talking about just any other human being on the face of the planet. There's a lot of good people. But all those good people, they fall short of the glorious standard that God has. His holiness. His righteousness. It is His righteousness that saves us. Not mine. See, before the world was created, before it ever began, he had a plan to adopt you into his family, to pour his grace out on you, to pour his love out on you, to pour his kindness out on you, to set you free from sin, from death, to make you righteous. How does that happen? When you believe in him, it's simple. See, we make it so difficult. And then we got to figure out which ones are going to be allowed to come in. Who am I going to tell about this? Who am I going to tell that Jesus loves him? Who am I going to tell? Who, do, who is it? Who is it? Remember what it says. No matter who we are. No matter who we are. It's for everyone. Everyone. So whenever we see this and we understand this and we know that we're made right in his sight because of our faith, that we no longer have this penalty of sin, he goes on, and I want us to see this because ultimately we are called to do some things. We're not called to be where we were and to stay there. 
We're called in that. We're called through that. We're called at that. No matter how far down you've gone, no matter how far you've sunk, He's there. The foundation of your life should be Him. So when we see this and we go on, it says, can we boast? Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No. Because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. I want you to see that. Me getting to heaven is not based on what I've done. I'm not accepted by God because of what I've done. I'm not accepted by God because I've obeyed some rules. Because I've done enough good. See, there are people who think I'm going to do enough good and I'll get into heaven and, and he'll check it off and I'll be good enough. You'll never be good enough. You can't be good enough. No one is good enough. They're not. Every single man and woman, every single boy and girl, every person on the face of the planet, according to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, have fallen short of the glorious standard of God. So we can't boast about what we've done to be accepted by God. In verse 28, so we are made right with God through faith, not by obeying the law. I want you to see that idea of by faith, we're made right with God. By faith, we are made right with God. By faith. So the very thing that so many people oppose these days is the very thing that makes us right with God. It's my faith. I have faith that God loves me. I have faith that God died on a cross for me. I have faith that he poured his grace out on me. I have faith that he has mercy upon me. I I have faith that he has kindness towards me. I have faith that no matter how bad I was, no matter what stupid things I've done, he still loves me. And that punishment on that cross was for me. And then he rose from the dead and he, and he lives. He's at the right hand of the Father right now, ready to return. Oh, that day's coming. After all, in verse 29, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is. There is only one God, and he makes people right with himself only by faith. Whether they are Jews or Gentiles. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. See, it is my faith that helps me to fulfill the law. Because see, Jesus, he is everything. And when I accept Jesus Christ into my life and I have faith in him and I understand the love that he has and the love that he is, until I have that, I can't truly understand how it is that I am to love my neighbor. I can't really love my neighbor apart from my faith in God. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for my faith in God, I wouldn't have much love for my neighbor. I would have love for those who love me and treat me nicely. Isn't that how it kind of works? We're good to those who are good to us. We show respect to those who show respect to us. We are kind to those who are kind to us. Eye for an eye. Have you ever heard of that? So, as we... Slow down here for a moment and say a word of prayer. I pray that you remember what this is all about. I pray that you remember that ultimately, verse 5 reads, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. 
This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with his blood, with the blood of his son, and forgave our sins. Jesus forgives your sins. Do you have faith to ask him to come into your heart? Do you have faith to ask him to forgive you of your sins? Do you have faith? Jesus says it's just a faith of a mustard seed. It can move mountains. Lord, I pray that again, as all this sickness is going around and just sticking around this house. Lord, I pray for those who are normally in person uh, that I wasn't able to be there tonight. Lord, I pray that they continue to know that they are loved. Lord, for those who have dedicated themselves to continue into going deeper, to grow stronger online, Lord, I pray that they know that they are loved. Lord, let them know that that in, in no matter what situation comes our way, that it is based upon my faith in you. Lord, help us to really be holding on to and value in the reality that you are the one who has brought salvation to us. We did not bring salvation to you. Lord, we are not saved because of what we have done or what we do. It is based on faith. So, Lord, help my faith build my strength. And, Lord, help my faith be relying upon you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.